All right, can you guys hear me? All right, sweet. Okay, so quick recognition here. Um, so these are the coaches that have hit success clubs so far this month. So these people are at success club six. They've helped three people so far this month with a challenge pack. So we have Ann Potter, Brooke Reed, Jessica Stewart, Sharmila Busa, Emma Carney, Jen Sansone, also known now as Jennifer Miza Jeski. Uh, we're gonna need a little help on that one. Uh, Ma Jeski. Majeski. Awesome. All right, cool. I like that name, Majeski. Uh, also with a new last name, Amy Ecker, uh, Emily Caswell, Sheridan Coffey, Jonah Pedro, Jennifer Smith, Mackenzie Taylor, Kelsey Moore, Lauren Adams, Sam Ferguson, Lauren Howell, Sarah Cabral, Danielle Rode, Gina Martino, Maddie Guterman, Anastasia Redding, Kelsey Connor, Emily Hillsdorf, Chelsea Len, Teresa Neitlinger, Zoe McKenzie, Tara Kirk, Sydney Thompson, Cassie Schmelzinger, Cambry Farmer, Carrie Steelman Schmidt, Casey Bocklet, Cassie Silvaggi, Sarah Loving, Shaneka Dunn, Megan Jones, Courtney Kraut, Caitlin Teft, Kate Schultz, Bailey Glanzer, Ann Demzak, and Ashley Bell Dyson. And then so far, so far as a team, uh, Team Boom as a whole, so far for the month of September, we have helped 459 people commit to a challenge pack and a challenge group. So 459 so far this month. And then, so we got the top, uh, top volume producers. So top 20 volume producers from uh, the week. We got Ashley Feld Dyson at the top. And then second is Jennifer Majeski. And then Kelly Marks. And then Megan Jones, Amy Morgan, Rachel Batch Elder, Bailey Glanzer, Andrea Wallace, Chris Bocklet, Casey Bocklet, Kylie Wene, Amy Ecker, Anastasia Redding, Emily Kabaka, Michelle Humerick, Joe Palacino, Michaela Bardulkis, Shelly Garza, Ashley Feldison, Second Business Center, and Emily Millman. So that is the top volume producers from uh, last week, the week ending last Wednesday. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, so I don't know if Amy, do you want me to introduce Jen real quick? I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So Jen is an unbelievable dancer. Um, she has been if known to dish out dance moves to anybody that's willing to take them on at any given time at the bar. Um, she's taught me one move that I, I still haven't uh, perfected yet. I think she's waiting for me to perfect it before she's going to teach me the next one. Um, so if you, if you get to hang out with her, uh, just ask her, you know, what move she has in mind for you. And uh, she always has something original. Um, so that's always a nice little gift from Jen. Um, she, I would guess, has been a coach for a little over two, two years. Um, her first 12 months she hit success club five every month and then her second 12 months she hit success club 10 every month so she helped at least three people every month her first year and then her second year she helped at least five people every month uh, she is a diamond coach she works in the financial world in boston uh, at putnam so that is something that's near and dear to my heart, that financial world in Boston. I used to do it back in the day. Uh, she just recently got married, went on her honeymoon to uh, Italy, and uh, looked like she had an amazing time, but was crushing her Beachbody business while she was on her honeymoon. It was funny because I'm seeing all these pictures of her like on her honeymoon in Italy, like living the life, 
And also I see your name showing up on all these leaderboards, like crushing success club. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, how is this possible? Um, so I was like, Amy, we got to get Jen on a call. I mean, she's got to tell us like what, how this is working, how she's doing this, how she's pulling it off with her job and the wedding and the honeymoon. And she's so consistent with hitting success club 10 every month. Like, we got to get her on here. She's also really real about when things aren't going well in her life with dealing with stress and anxiety and depression and all those things that everyone, you know, wants to hide. She's very real and authentic about sharing those kind of things. And uh, I think people really appreciate that. I know I do. I think people see that, Hey, like she's not perfect. She struggles with some of this stuff and she's finding ways to overcome it at times, not all the time, but more often than she probably would have. Um, so I really respect her for, for that. And I know a lot of the people that follow her, you know, respect her for that too. And I think that has a big, a big reason why so many people are consistently joining her challenge groups month after month. Um, so really excited for Jen to hop on here and, and share with all of us. Jen, thanks for taking the time flying back from Italy just for this. For the record, I've been back for a few weeks now. I know. I know. <laughs> Um, wow, um, that was a great introduction. So thank you for that. I think that summarized kind of everything perfectly, just how I started with Beachbody um, and kind of where I've gone um, since I started it. And the thing that I really want to stress to everybody who took the time to be on this call tonight is that, you know, you guys know there really is no secret to quote unquote crushing this. The secret is being consistent and showing up um, even on the days when you don't really feel like it. Um, not letting your excuses get the best of you and to to your point, show to your followers that we're all human and that we all struggle with things. And the thing about Beachbody and the business opportunity, as well as our challenge groups, we're equipped with all of these things that allow us to kind of overcome or work on overcoming those challenges that are being thrown at us constantly. Um, and I honestly don't think that I would be able to recognize when I'm struggling as much without Beachbody um, because it's really kind of allowed me, especially on the personal development side, to hone in on how I'm feeling, what my mindset is, um, and just being genuine and authentic and letting people know that it's okay if you don't have your life completely figured out. Um, all we can do is take it one day at a time, show up for yourself, show up for the people in your life, um, work on things that are going to make you a better person and feel good. So for me, that's about showing up at 530 in the morning and getting my workout done and getting good sweat on, um, listening to some personal development before I have to go to my job um, and face the stress of the day. So it shows people that nothing is impossible. If you really want to better yourself and become healthier from the inside out and also, you know, make an added in income, you can do that. Um, so that's what I'm trying to show. Um, a little bit kind of about my story. I, like you said, I've been a coach for two years now. My first year, I was kind of a hobby coach. Uh, dabbled in and out, like hit success club, but wasn't really super consistent with those business building activities. And then the second I got to summit, um, and headed on our team retreat in October of last year, that's really when I made a decision that I need to show, um, myself and my followers that if I'm consistent with this, that I can really be successful. Um, and so that's when, you know, you, you see that shift from success club five hobby coaching to, you know, diamond, um, success club 10. And now like I'm working to continue that momentum. And I think when we're struggling and dealing with challenges, it's so easy to let those challenges, um, kind of overtake us. And with this, I've made it a point to, help these challenges fuel me and push me forward because I think that I'm being dealt this hand of cards right now for a reason. Um, as kind of cliche as that may sound, I, I really do believe that, that my follower base needs to see that 
you know, I'm dealing with some difficult things right now. And then I'm using this community and these workouts and this business opportunity to move forward, even if it's hard. Um, so I think so many people let their excuses get the best of them and let their business crumble when they face a hard time. So I'm coming on record literally to say, you know, I'm not letting this hard time right now crush me. I'm letting it push me forward and build relationships with my followers um, because people want somebody who they can trust, who they relate to. They don't want somebody who's perfect. Um, so sorry, I kind of just word vomited all over the place, but <laughs> um, that's kind of like how I feel right now. Um, not to no, say it's easy, but yeah. I love it. I think I, I like how you said like the, this is kind of, I don't think it is cliche at all what you said, where this is like, this was the perfect uh, hand that you were dealt at this time, because there's a, a sphere of influence that each of us have that nobody else can touch. There's certain people in our sphere of influence that nobody else can reach except us. And sometimes the only way we can reach them is to meet them where they're at. And a lot of times people are in the shit. And so we have to kind of meet them there in order for them to be like, okay, like she's dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with, or she's dealt with what I'm currently dealing with. Now they're willing to listen to like the solution that you have that's helping you get out of the shit. Um, but if you don't meet them in the shit, they're not willing to listen to how to, you know, make that bridge, that gap and get out of it. So I think sometimes the, the hand you're dealt is turns out to not just be your struggle. It ends up turning into your strength. And I've seen that happen with so many successful coaches is they, they use their struggle and they turn it into their strength. It becomes the thing that is like their soapbox to stand on and use to show people like, Hey, I'm going through the same things you're going through but here's something that's helped me mitigate it a little bit at a time over time. And I would love to help you with that. So I think you're doing a great job of turning that struggle into a strength right now, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. Um, that's what I'm trying to do is just in addition to showing my workouts and showing like my day to day schedule, sharing some tips and things that I'm learning about living with anxiety, living with depression, how I have an action plan in place, just to, just to show people like, hey, I'm dealing with something right now, but here's how I'm putting an action plan in place. And maybe have you ever thought about seeing a therapist? Have you ever thought about, you know, reading a personal development book to help you with your mindset? Just giving people solutions that um, even if they don't sign up as a customer, that you're there as a resource and they look to you for advice or inspiration. And I've noticed that ever since I've been more open about my struggles, and it's only been a few weeks now because I was coming down off of that, you know, wedding high, honeymoon high, and then kind of real life smacked me in the face. And I think that has a lot to do with my anxiety now. So I think just being open with people about the ups and downs that you're going through and giving them things and tips that you're learning really builds trust. Um, and, you know, when I did sign up a whole lot of new customers, when I was on my honeymoon, it's because I had built up trust um, just by being consistent over the two years I've been doing this. So it's not really to say I'm doing one thing better than somebody else. It's literally just showing up, um, putting in the work and making it work for you. Um, I think it's easy with all of the new products and the tools that Beachbody puts out there for us. It's easy to get super overwhelmed and not really understand or have a plan in place on what you should focus on. So leading up to morning meltdown 100, I made a decision like, this is what I'm doing. This is when I'm starting it. This is why I'm excited. This is the start date. This is when you need to sign up. If you miss the date, this is when you can sign up again. And I stuck to that. And I think people really notice that. Mm -hmm. They notice when you're showing up and sticking to a program. So if you're doing Morning Meltdown 100 right now, post on your stories every day what workout you're on. I'm on 62 out of 100 or whatever. And people will see that. They're tapping through and they'll quickly say, oh my God, she's almost done with this 100 program. What is she going to do next? So, you know, Beachbody has a ton of new programs coming out, new products. 
For me personally, there's a bar program coming out in December. Um, there's the new Shakeology launch. So those are the things that I'm going to be talking about in the coming months. And just having a plan and sticking to that and not flip-flopping, I think people also really take notice of that. So be real, be authentic, be genuine, share your life, but also like stick to a plan and show that you're committed because people are not going to want to sign up with a coach who's not disciplined and not committed. So I think that's another reason why people have been trusting me and signing up with me is because they see me every day at 5.30, like dancing in my kitchen like an idiot. Um, but they know that I'm going to be doing that regardless of what's going on. Do you have a lot of people that end up buying a challenge pack from you that you had had a conversation with and they weren't ready like a year ago or anything like that? Oh my gosh. All the time. I mean... I think about my own journey. I told Amy no for like three years because I, yeah, three, because I wasn't ready. Um, and I, I had to keep seeing her show up. And so that's the same sort of thing that's happening with me. They don't, you know, they don't want to just sign up for the sake of signing up. They're signing up uh, because they've built a relationship with you or they've watched you stay so disciplined and consistent over time and they respect your work ethic yeah. um, or they trust your opinion. So I, you know, that's my message to people out there too, who might be getting frustrated with people saying no, they're going to come back around. Like they seriously will. I mean, it's on you to follow up and check in on them, but they will come back around. And sometimes all they need is an extra nudge of a new program, a new product uh, to kind of excite them and get them into your next challenge group. Um, but they'll come back around providing that you do the work and you show up and you set the example. Love it. Yeah. That's I think one of the most inspiring things. I think we think, of, Oh, I don't think I'm ready to be a coach. Or, I don't think I can inspire anybody, but inspiring somebody is a lot of times is just doing your stuff long enough and consistently enough to eventually spark someone to be like, all right, now I'm ready. I've been watching her for two years, three years. That's inspiring. You know, I think that, consistency is more inspiring than anything so and then you're so you're consistent with sharing your journey showing up how what does it look like for you as far as that next step of like gaining a following connecting with those people starting a conversation with those people and then eventually you know, inviting them to to join you i mean i think i'm just really big on cultivating relationships and i have in my head that, you know, when I engage somebody who's a new follower or go in my DMs and check in on people that I'm not there to just sell them a challenge pack. I'm actually there to foster a relationship. And it's really easy sometimes when you're sitting down and you're hyper focused and you're looking at your bat, you know, I'm going to fire off these 30 invites today. Just like take a second, take a step back and just think about the person that you're about to talk to. And if you've had a conversation with them before, like don't just go right into that selling mindset because that selling mindset isn't going to get you very far. Um, you need to understand like, what if that person was sitting right there in front of you face to face? Would you speak that way to them? Would you have that same sort of conversation? So when I have conversations with people, I don't use scripts. Um, I talk like I'm talking to a really good friend. Um, and you know, I build relationships over time. So a lot of the times when I'm reaching out to new followers, it's not, Hey, saw you like my post. Want to join my challenge group? It's, you know, Hey, thanks so much for the love of my post. You know, it's been really hard for me to talk about my issues with anxiety, but I'm finding that being more open and vulnerable, vulnerable about it is helping me personally deal with it. You know, do you struggle with it too? And just, trying to build a relationship that's deeper than the like on the post or, you know, the fact that they, their eyeballs watch my stories. I think shooting off the same message to people is dead. Um, I don't think it works anymore. So I don't send the Hey Girl messages. They don't work for me personally. It's all about just building the relationship. And if I don't get to an invite that day, I don't really take it as a day where I didn't drive my business forward because at the end of the day, I'm building relationships. That being said, I don't sit in the messages all day long and talk about nonsense. Um, I 
you know, kind of try to have a back and forth conversation for a little while. And then I'll, I'll say, you know, I've noticed that you've been liking my health and fitness posts too. You know, are you on a journey yourself or have you gone to any classes recently that you liked? And I just try to strike up conversations, just ask questions that I would ask a normal person um, if I met them face to face. Gotcha. And then what does, if they say like, I'm not really on a journey right now or yeah, I'm kind of on a journey, but it's, you know, here and there I try to, what, what's like kind of the next thing that you like kind of try to say, how do you, I guess, how do you like transition into being like, I'd love it. You know, if you want to try one of these workout programs with me and, and we kind of did it together. I think what's been awesome about Beachbody recently is with every new program that's come out, they've given us the free workouts. So I leverage those a ton. So if somebody says, Ooh, I don't really know if I can commit to a hundred days or I don't know if I'd like it. I just say, you know what? I have a free workout. I can send you no strings attached. It's 30 minutes. It's really fun. Would love to know your opinion on it. And then I write down like for my follow-ups on Friday, every single person that I sent that um, free workout to, because I, I try to pivot the conversation to health and wellness. Even if they say like, no, I'm not really doing anything right now. If somebody offers you a free workout, that's 30 minutes. That's really fun. And I, and I talk about the live DJ and the fact that Jericho's super cool and has an awesome vibe. Um, and was a dancer, like people kind of, uh, want to, want to try it out and it's free. So if they say no, like, okay, bless and release, not my tribe. Yeah. That's awesome. I think you're giving them something for nothing. You know, you're giving them something of value for nothing. Um, and I like how you say like, Hey, I, you know, kind of would, would love to hear like what you think about it, you know, get your opinion on it, that kind of thing. Um, let's see if there's a couple questions in here. Agreed. Nice throw. Um, so what is, so you said you'd like to do your invites on Friday. I think I've heard Amy say that, like she likes doing her follow-ups. I mean, on Friday because people get paid on Friday. Yeah. So it sounds like your tracking system's like pretty simple. You just kind of write down the names of the people you've sent the free workout. That's the only way, the only thing you really track is like the people you've sent the free workout to. Yeah. So I track that. Um, I'm a paper and pen type of person. So I'm like, my tracking system is not super like technology driven. Obviously I work better off of writing things down and physically crossing things off. So that's why laminating the bat has been really good. Cause I can just physically cross it off with a marker and all of that. But my follow-up strategy is, you know, if I've messaged them and flagged the conversation in DMS, um, I'll go back and filter my conversations. Um, so typically if I've invited somebody, I wait two weeks to follow up with them or that week, if I've sent them the free workout or we've had a meaningful conversation and I feel like I can invite them again, I can follow up with them again, I'll write them down um, as a follow-up. So it's, there's no like real science to it. Um, I just, I try to stay organized as best I can. So for me personally, when I try to keep up with Asana or Google Sheets or use Streak, I just, I just don't have enough time right now to prioritize implementing those systems. I would love to, but it's just not where I'm focusing my attention right now. I have to just be super laser focused on how I can move my business forward, but not drive myself insane in, while trying to do that with a full-time job. <laughs> so what do you, so do you, how do you like schedule your time? Um, so I do like the power, the power pocket strategy. So, um, Melanie Metro talks about this all the time, just figuring out, um, you know, when you can work your business based on um, your schedule. So for me, I have to be at work, you know, nine to five. So I get up at 5.30. So 5.30 to seven is like when I get my workout done, um, do my personal development, send my invites, clean out my inboxes, figure out what posts I'm going to post. And I just get it all done in the morning as much as I possibly can. Then I'll work um, on like lunch, 12 to one, one to two, whenever I choose to step out and kind of clear my head a little bit. Um, and then throughout the day, like, you know, I'll take a walk or go get a coffee and clean out a couple of messages, but I'm really at my job for the most part. 
Um, so I do the best that I can, uh, but I don't beat myself up if it's not perfect. So if I don't get to all those invites that day, I'll do them on the commute home. Um, I'll do them when I get home from work. So 6.30 to 8.30 PM. I also uh, choose to work because if I'm working and sending invites right up until when I have to go to bed, I feel like my brain is constantly spinning. And with the anxiety that I'm dealing with right now, I have to be really strict um, and diligent with myself on making sure I take time away from my phone. Um, so 8.30, I try to like put my phone in the other room and just zone out, um, focus on me, um, try, to be, try to think about what went well for the day, um, three things that I'm grateful for. Practicing gratitude um, is part of my anxiety uh, uh, like action plan, if you will. <laughs> so just trying to be super disciplined with my working hours and stick to that. Cause I think it's easy to burn, burn yourself out when you have a corporate job or when you have other commitments because we, this job is purely on social media, we can burn ourselves out. For a lot of coaches, like when, you know, they're sharing their journey consistently and then they start to connect with people and people are starting to show interest. Maybe they click on a poll in someone's story or, fill out a form or something. A lot of times coaches will be like, Oh my God, like they're interested. What do I do? What do I do? And then they just like throw a ton of like language at them about like, what is, what's in the challenge pack and all like when someone's kind of showing interest, it sounds like part of what you do is send them a free workout. But like, how does that, how do you kind of play that out where oh, if someone's showing a little bit of interest, they clicked on a poll, like what's kind of your next step. Do you ask them a lot of questions about, you know, what their goals are, like how, what does that kind of sound like? Yeah, I I try to um, focus the conversation on them because to your point, if we go and we launch into, oh my God, so excited you're interested. Here's what you're going to get. Here's how much it's going to be. Like that can be super overwhelming from, from someone who hasn't maybe heard that from you before. So I try to get a sense from them, like, what are your goals? How many, in an ideal world, how many days would you work out per week? Um, do you need more structure with your nutrition first before you start throwing in workouts? Um, do you feel like you need some energy in the morning? Have you seen me drink my pre-workout? Um, just try to like get a sense from them on what their goals actually are. Because if you launch right into the full sales pitch and just tell them what they're going to get immediately right off the bat, I think that can be a big turnoff for people. Um, I, I go back and I think about my initial conversations with Amy and not once did we ever have a conversation like that. It was more about like, you've been liking my post or you liked my res- my recipe for something. Um, let me give that recipe to you. And just like building that relationship and not launching right into the sales pitch. Um, I, you know, there, sometimes if they ask for more information, there'll be some graphics like this is what you get for morning meltdown 100 and I'll send that over to them. But I try to have a full on conversation with them about their goals. So they know that no matter what happens, I'm really invested in them and their well being. And even if they say no, I think you're just, uh, I think your hand might be on the mic on the microphone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now you're back. Oh, that's so weird. I wasn't touching anything. Yeah. That's so weird. So yeah, anyways, it's, I think it just goes to show when you're asking questions about their goals that you're just invested in their well-being and that even if they tell you no at the moment, that you've built that trust in that relationship and it gives you something to talk to them about too in the future. So yeah. if you want to check in on them, you can say, you know, how's, how was the whole 30? Like, was it really hard? I've never done one before. Like was giving up sugar really hard for 30 days and then you can kind of like laugh with them about it or yeah 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 i think that's i think that's a big big shift going from a a conversation of actually asking them questions getting to know what they're doing what they've tried in the past what hasn't worked what they're struggling with um and then going into like, okay, this might be a good fit for you based on what you're telling me versus being like, Hey, you should do this. I think this is, this is going to be a good fit for you. And they're like, you don't even know me. Right. And then, okay. So then let's say you do that. You're asking them questions and you get to really dig deep and, and then you tell them kind of what they would get, you know, if they did decide to do a challenge group with you and then they have an objection, what are like the biggest objections you get 
I'm sure you get, unless you never get objections. No, I get objections all the time. I would say um, money is a big one. uh, Money, time, money and time are probably the two biggest ones that I get. Mm -hmm. Or like, I'm not a protein shake person or I don't know, like you, you name it. You guys have heard them all too, I'm sure. But money and time is definitely the biggest one that I get. Um, and the thing that I try to stress to them is yes, you know, you might be wanting to sign up for this 100 day program. It's self paced. So if you can't get a workout done on a, on a certain day, like don't beat yourself up over it. We're not perfect. Um, I certainly didn't do workouts when I was in Italy and Greece on my honeymoon. Like, you know, we all go through challenges. So when you say that you're taking this 100 day program on, I want you to know that I'm here as your, you know, your coach and your resource, but we can figure out a schedule that's going to work for you. So if you know that you can't do Monday and Wednesday nights, um, because you have to bring the kids to their soccer game or whatever, let's figure out a time where maybe you could fit two in on one day, or, um, we can build in a rest day for you and then figure out where you can pick it back up. So just trying to meet people where they're at, as opposed to shoving a solution down their throat is, um, something that comes with time as you start to handle people's objections. And the cost objection, I think it's just, you know, it's all about priority. So that's what I tell people when they say that they, you know, they just can't have them. They don't have the money right now. I, you know, I, I kind of put it back on them and I, and I say, um, you know, like, I totally understand where you're coming from. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. You know, we can come up with a plan to help you save for this. Um, but I just want to let you know that it is an investment um, in you and your future, you get a year's worth of access to this whole library of workouts. Um, and I guarantee you that you have a whole, uh, sleeve of passes to classes that you might not have used or some free workouts that you've downloaded that you haven't even touched, or maybe you even have a gym membership. Um, and I just try to like get a little real with them and kind of turn up the SAS factor a little bit without being, um, a complete, like meanie (laughs) but you know just you kind of have to call people out sometimes what does that mean how do you how do you turn up the sass factor (laughs) just like what i said you know like oh you know i've been seeing that you've been going to orange theory i know those classes are you know 30 bucks a class like how like is that your priority i can definitely help you like these workouts are shorter than that much more efficient and you'll be saving a lot of money so you can go out and like buy something nice for your closet or something. I don't know. I try to have a lighthearted conversation. So people know, you know, I know that they're making an excuse right now and that it's all about priorities. Um, but that, then again, you know, you can't be super pushy about it. So I try to tread the line depending on our relationship. Um, but it, it is an excuse that we get a lot. Um, so you have to show people the value and what they're getting. You know, I think the free workouts do that really well. They can get a taste for just one of the almost 1000 workouts they're going to get. And they see, holy crap, I've never sweat this much in 30 minutes of my life. Like, wow, she's onto something here. Was there like a point where you went from like not feeling very confident about being able to hit success club and success club 10 to all of a sudden, like something started, things started clicking, something started clicking and it, and it just became like, okay, I know I'm going to be able to hit, like it be at least be able to help three or at least five people a month. Like what was it? Like, was there a skill you developed that you got better at or was it a mindset thing or? I think it's, um, as soon as I started getting really serious about like committing to doing those income producing activities every day, like I know that if I show up and I, you know, do a mixture of invites and follow-ups every single day and post on my feed and build relationships and add new followers, that it's inevitable that I will hit success club. That's not to say if, you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting at zero at a certain point in the month that I'm like, losing it, 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 that it's not hard for me, but I try to focus more on, okay, I'm building relationships here. It's not about like, I don't have any success club points. It's all right. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the things. And as hard as it might be for me to keep seeing the nose flood back into my inbox, I just have to know and believe that it's going to turn into something, um, in the long run. 
that's exactly what happened to me with Amy. It's exactly what's happened to me with so many of my current customers. And um, it's just part of this business. So you just have to keep at it, stay consistent, do the things, um, work on your mindset, even when things are hard, even when you don't feel like sending invites, um, just show people that you're disciplined and consistent and you know, it's inevitable that you'll hit it. Um, Hashtag inevitable. Exactly. Hashtag. Uh, did you always have that type of patience and discipline? I think that's probably the biggest mistake that most coaches make is they expect when they invite someone that the yes is going to follow. Mm. And when it doesn't follow, and they, it's very hard for them to wrap their head around the fact that people are going to say no, but they're going to watch you closer now. And they're, and they're going to need to watch you stay consistent for six months, a year, two years, three years. That's, it's very hard for coaches for them to wrap that, their head around that. It seems like you were able to wrap your head around it like pretty, pretty early on. Um, I guess yeah. because, because that's what you did with Amy. <laughs> yeah. I think I just had to like, every time I, somebody gave me an objection of some sort, I just tried to focus on the fact that it, it didn't mean no forever. And that I had to put myself in their shoes because I told Amy no for three years. Um, and, and try to give them value and build a relationship that's not purely based on a sale. So, um, you know, it is hard. It's still hard when people tell me no, but at this point, once you started doing it for so long, it's just part of, it's just part of the business and it's just building a relationship and you don't even know it. So you can't get discouraged when you see like, no, not right now. I'm not interested at this time. If anything, it's like, this girl's going to come back around in like three months. I know yeah. it. And you're, so your mindset about a no or a not, you know, is more of like, you're excited. You're like, okay, I've just planted a seed and this, and this is going to grow into something down the road. And versus yeah. like, oh man, another no, like this is terrible. Like, yeah. And I think too, with the discipline, it's, you just have to, you have, it's just like showing up for your fitness journey. You have to show up for your business too. Like you yeah. can't, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to send those invites tomorrow. Like I'm just going to put it off for today. It's just do it. You'll feel better once you do it. You'll feel like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I'm a, I could, I could have changed someone's life today. Like I have, maybe when I check my inbox, you know, I, somebody's going to tell me yes. And that they, yeah. need that's awesome. Um, and you, and you schedule that time that you're going to work your business and you schedule it just like you schedule your job. Yeah. Like your job is scheduled nine to five and you have your set hours that you schedule for your business. Just like you're an employee showing up and you're the boss as well. Uh, yeah, I, I treat it like like a business for sure, and and like I said, that was a definite mindset shift on my part. Um, it's not easy, but like it's a decision. So when you sit down and you commit to doing this, like when you commit to filling out your bat, like it's literally like you're submitting a timesheet for a job. In my mind, yeah, I like that. That's a good. I like that analogy. Uh, we got you guys. If you guys have questions, you can. Uh, throw them in the chat here. Or you can even un un unmute yourself, but we got a question about, so how do you approach someone after getting rejected for a couple months or a year or two years in a non-invasive way? I feel like that conversation a couple months later after getting rejected is really hard for me. And I think maybe even changing the language of rejected is I think pretty helpful. Like I don't, I don't really hear a, coach when they get to the point or coaches get to the point and they don't say I got rejected. They say like, I planted a seed today. That's a very different terminology. And I know it's like, you know, semantics, but it makes a difference. The, the language you use when you're talking about, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of, it's funny. Like I, and you don't have to apologize, but that's just like something you learn over time. You start to like talk a little differently. It helps. I know it helps me. Like my internal dialogue I have with myself, like this, it's not a rejection. It's a seed that's been planted. But yeah, how do you, how do you go about that? I was just going to say like, so I feel like I'm just rereading the question. Again. I feel like having that conversation a couple months later after getting rejected is really hard for me. I, I totally understand how you feel. Um, it's never easy kind of going back to a message thread and scrolling up and being like, oh my gosh, yeah, this girl, she told me no. But I, ju I just try to like, 
phrase it, don't apologize that you're new, you're doing awesome. Um, uh, I just try to phrase it that I'm checking in on them. Like, I'm not like, hey girl, just want to follow up to see if you want to join my next challenge group. It's, hey, like it's been a, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since we chatted. How are you? How's your summer? Like, I can't believe it's, it's flown by. Um, September feels like a fresh start. You know, I started this new workout program. I'm loving it. Like, how are you doing? And just genuinely like putting it back on them. Like, how are you? And not saying like, you know, I know when we spoke the last time, you told me no. just trying to stay positive and trying to, you know, build that relationship back up and that conversation back up. So you can go in for another invite when you feel like the time is ready. If you feel like that conversation. I think your hands are hitting whatever your hands are touching. I don't know what's going Yeah. It's weird. Sorry. But, I don't know. Computer. <laughs> I don't know what's going um, on. Um, yeah, so just trying to keep it lighthearted and, and keep it positive and, um, and, and not kind of lunging right into that bill. I think this, I think I'm guessing this is Caroline asking, but yeah. some, sometimes the, the way I think about it is like, if this person, if this person keeps showing up and liking my posts or they keep showing up and watching my stories all the time. Like to me, my social media is like my store front. It's like a storefront. Like if I owned a juice, like a juice spot and people would come into my store and not buy anything and then like leave, I wouldn't get upset. And then they'd come back like the next month and walk into the store. I'd still be like, Hey, like, how's it going? Like, I see, you know, you're watching my stories or Hey, like, Thanks for coming in today. Like, you know, what's going on with you? How are you? I feel like if people are continuing to watch your stories, it's, it's like they're continuing to walk into your storefront and you just want to greet them and ask them how they're doing, even though they might've walked into your storefront two months ago and didn't buy anything and walked out. They're still coming into your store. They're still like seeing what's going on. So it's still good to just be like, Hey, like, what's up? Like, how you been? Like, good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for stopping by and then letting the conversation kind of go from there. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's where I struggle like the most because I'm very competitive and I am definitely like, I take everything to heart. So like, I don't want to like message them. And like I said, like be invasive or whatever. And like, be like, oh, hey, yo, I messaged you like a month ago. Again, like I'm still learning. Um, this pa These past two months have actually been like super effing hard because I like, had such a hot market at first and I've just been like dry as the Sahara over here <laughs> um, but like I just I, I feel like I've had like probably a dozen conversations where they're like right there and then they're like uh ah, maybe at another time I'm like oh like it's just it's kind of crushed me so I guess like trying to approach it at another month and I've had a lot of people especially this month like oh hey like maybe next month or the month later and then I'm like okay so how do I start that conversation yeah I think it's like it's it's like learning a, like lacrosse you know like you're not going to be amazing the first time you pick up a lacrosse stick like you're going to get better and better the more you do it I think when you are competitive you tend to have the hunter's mentality of I'm going to go out today and I'm going to bring something home today mm -hmm. whereas in this business it doesn't always it doesn't really work like that instead of a hunter you have to be a farmer and you have to kind of go out and plant seeds and not expect to bring home crops that day you have to plant seeds and, and then you have to water them and, and till the soil and give them and give it sun for months and months and months and the way you do that is by showing up consistently on your own journey letting them watch you once you've planted that seed that's how you help that seed start to grow and then you can you know start to see that grow into something three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, that farmer's mentality is, is very difficult to shift from, from the hunter's mentality, especially for someone who like wants to, you know, to happen right now and, and has that competitive nature. But that, but if you kind of cultivate that farmer's mentality, it, you're going to really start to see all these seeds you're planting today that you feel like you're getting rejected on They're You're going to realize, wow, like I'm glad I stuck with this because these seeds are really starting to sprout now. What do you, how what would you add to that, Jen? Anything? I mean, I would just reiterate like everything you just said. I think your analogy about not going out with a hunter mindset is awesome. Like I wish someone said that to me when I first started um, and to focus on just like building those relationships and cultivating those conversations, just like it was a plant that you're trying to take care of. Right. So um, yeah, just like people will come. You 
just have to be consistent. You just have to be disciplined with it. And I know it's really easy to get discouraged when you're competitive because I get the same way. And that's why personal development and making sure that you're checking that off on your business activity tracker every single day is so important. Because if you're not in the right mindset, you're not going to want to do this. You're not going to want to invite people. So showing up for yourself, yeah. um, focusing on you, and then you can kind of like spread that, those vibes and focus in on other people. Yeah. I think one, there was one, uh, the, an audio it was a cd i bought it at an event it was like a one dollar cd and i my car i was telling alex this on the call earlier like my car for a year after i bought that cd didn't run without gas and without that cd playing I, until the point it didn't work anymore because i wore it out and then i had to go and buy a new one of that exact same cd and that cd that audio it's like a 45 minute audio that i would listen to over and over and over and it conditioned my brain to be disciplined to be that farmer and that's what led to me having success after not having a lot of success my first few years it's on youtube now you can listen to it on youtube you don't have to get the cd because i don't even think cars have cd players anymore but it's called how to build your network marketing business how how to build your network marketing business and the guy, the guy's name's Jim Rohn, Jim, and the last name's R O H N. How to build your network marketing business, Jim Rohn. Listening to that over and over and over really is going to help you start to discipline your disappointment, which means you stay disciplined and you stay consistent and patient when you're disappointed. And that's what leads to all the these seeds you're planting now turning into something amazing. And the other thing that helped me was I, I remembered that to, to build the type of income I wanted to build with this business, I didn't need a million coaches, a million challengers. I only needed like two or three really great ones. And so I knew that if I just continued to plant seeds and show up day after day, that inevitably I was going to eventually find those two or three great coaches that wanted to crush this thing with me and they were going to find their two or three great coaches of their own. So that was always in the back of my mind on the days where I was like, my successful points are like our shit this week or, you know, or this month or something. Like I was always like, I'm not trying to, I'm not a success club. All I'm like, that's not my goal. It's success club is great. And it's like, helps me know I'm kind of working on my path and stuff. But my big picture goal was always in, in the back of my mind. So I always felt like I was staying disciplined and consistent because my goal in the long run was two or three great coaches. Two yeah, I think I'm having like a hard time separating that success club isn't like, it, it's just really hard. I'm always driven by numbers and score. I mean, I was an athlete, so it's like you want to get the highest score. You want to yeah. get the highest salary and all right. that stuff. Yeah. And um, as awesome as it is having like all these freaking badass coaches surrounding me, it's also a kick to the balls because I'm like, fuck, I'm usually the best at whatever I do. And now I'm like, wow, I'm the shittiest at this. Like, I know nothing. But it's like helped having you guys. But it's definitely, I think, um, I've definitely been not doing as much as I can. So I will say that. I'll admit it. Um, but I think with being a student and being in clinic, like, um, I think it's just right. I'm sorry if you're, I got your name wrong. But having that time and, like, making it, like, waking up at 5.30 to 7 and doing that, I think that's really – that's where you set yourself apart um, from everyone else. Yeah. Jen, did you ever have that? Like, yeah, when you sorry. first – Jen, did you ever felt, feel like you had that comparison thing or, like, oh, like, I'm not as good as some, some of these other coaches? And, and how did you kind of deal with that? I, I mean, it happens to me all the time still. So, uh, to my earlier point, like – you just have to be super disciplined with how you use social media. So it's, it's really easy to fall into the trap of tapping your explore page. And, you know, if you've liked other health and wellness posts, maybe some of the top beach body coaches are on your explore page or other fitness bloggers. And while it's great to support them, if it's going to make you feel like you're not worthy of success or that you're not as good as them in a certain way, then like you need to be laser focused with how you use social media. So get on there, do your work, post your story, post your post, and get off of it. If it's if it's going to like propel you into that comparison mindset. Um, for me personally, that's something I struggle with. So I know, okay, Jen, you're going on social media. Like, don't waste your time tapping through everyone's stories. 
go on, post your own story, post your post, send your invites, and get off. Because you also have to get to work. <laughs> so I just have to, like, know that what what my triggers are personally and um, kind of go from there. It's really easy to compare yourself to everyone. Um, and, but at the end of the day, it's, it, it's not going to make you feel great when you do that. So just being mindful of that. Yeah. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah. And another cool analogy, I remember telling Chris this one time, was like Dom Starja, which is Chris is like college coach uh, at Virginia. Like Dom's not trying to recruit like 10 people every month. Like he's trying to find like quality, quality recruits once a year. Like, you know, like those top, the top tier people. So he could care less if like, you know, one of the lower tier colleges recruits way more recruits, but he's bringing in like those high quality, you know, less um, quantity people. So Caroline, that's what I would think more about is you don't need to be hitting the success club numbers that like other coaches are hitting. Like your long-term goal with this thing, I think is freedom and to, and to have freedom. It's not about hitting success club hundred every month. It's about finding and building real connections with people and finding those like two or three people that maybe that wanted to start with you. And if you go a month and it's just, you have a bad month, a cold month, but you're still planting seeds. I guarantee you that if you just keep showing up and keep planting the seeds, you're going to come out of that cold spell. They always, always end. The only way a cold spell doesn't end is if you just stop is if you quit planting seeds and you stop showing up, you know, to your own workouts. Um, so that, that really helped me too. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Thanks guys. You got it. Let's go. Game on. Escalator. Uh, any other questions? We got a couple minutes, two, two, three minutes here. Anything else, Jen, that you wanted to share that you didn't get a chance to? Just, I, I kind of hit on like my main points earlier. It's funny because I typed up like four pages, of no four pages of notes and didn't really look at them at all. <laughs> um during this call but I, I think it's just like show up be consistent be disciplined regardless of what your goals are for this business like figure out what you want and make it work for you you can let your excuses run your life or you can like run your life that the way that you want to run it so like figure out your schedule figure out what's going to work for you and do it and everybody has good times, everybody has bad times. Um, if you're struggling with something or if you also struggle with anxiety, like I, I wanted to raise my hand and just say, if you wanna talk, like I'm here, I'm dealing with it. I am trying to figure out what works best for me. Um, but if you wanna talk about it, I'm more than happy to, to chat with you about it. Um, share with your followers what's going on in your life. Um, people don't wanna sign up perfect. They wanna sign up with somebody who's real, somebody that they relate to. Um, and it's not just like selling them products. It's, you know, focusing on building a relationship with somebody because who knows, they might turn into, you know, a rock star coach or a rock star customer of yours. Um, so just like focus on building relationships and don't focus on the numbers so much. I love it. I love it. Awesome call. Um, and quick little shout out to Amy Realman Eckert now for staying consistent and patient for two or three years and letting Jen watch her um, and not getting discouraged and, and eventually Jen coming around. And now, you know, we get, we get Jen on the team rocking it and getting to share with all of us. And uh, if Amy had kind of given up and got and let the, dis the disappointment get the best of her, we wouldn't have the pleasure of knowing Jen and her, all her dance moves and uh, having her share her wisdom on the call. Um, so Jen, this was amazing. Let's, I'm going to let you guys unmute yourself. And uh, let's give Jen a big boom, on, a big boom on three. All right, everyone, put your hand in. Go, Amy. Boom um. on three. One, two, three. Boom. No phone, Amy. What up? <laughs> All right, Jen, take us out with a dance move. Show us one. Oh, baby. Oh. Shake it. Shake oh. it. Are you, do you really want to play this game with me? Oh, man. All right. <laughs> you just opened up a box. You don't want to open. Anybody else got to move? Who's got to move? 
Judah? Judah? Oh, oh. Those are reserved for late nights out. <laughs> All right. We're gonna, we RJ's might. first call opens up with a dance nope. move. No more, no RJ. more. No oh, more. Chris, what up, Carolyn? Let's go. <laughs> Love it. All right. RJ is my fan. We can Thanks, Jim. <laughs>